All right, we're live. It is the wrap-up show with John Schaefer and Jim Russell. We're presented by Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, here's the reason to do so. We have year-round Padres content, so that's what we're doing. Uh, so if you want year-round Padres content, Jim, tell them how to get the year-round Padres content. by hitting uh, the button down Subscribe to hit our the YouTube channel. Button. Yep, hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, hit the notification bell as well. Like these videos if you're here for us. Follow us on Twitter as well, at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. We're about to get into everything that went down today. Bob Melvin is the newest Padres manager. Can A.J. Preller work with a veteran manager? We're going to get into all of that. But first, as always, let's tell you about Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. And if you've been hearing these messages over the last handful of weeks, if you have any insurance needs, you got to turn to our buddy Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance right here in San Diego. If you got auto needs or home or life or renter's insurance, uh, there's only one place to turn. He's got a decade of experience helping people like us find the perfect insurance products. And what separates Mark from the competition is his customer service and his communication. If you click the link down below, that's all we ask. If you have any insurance needs and you're looking for a Padre fan that supports this show, get to Mark's website. Let him help you and your family with your insurance needs. And if you have any questions for him, want to reach out to him, all his information is above my head at mnimitz at farmersagent.com. That is email is mnimitz at farmersagent.com. All right. So if you're just getting in here to the live chat, we want your questions. You can uh, hit that description box down below on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, switch over to YouTube. Again, subscribe uh, and get some questions in because we're going to go over everything. Bob Melvin is the newest Padres manager. I was down there earlier today. Um, really, you know, it was a cool scene because I was there for the Jace Taylor press conference, Jim, as well, two years ago. It was like literally two years ago today. And it was, it was different. It's like Jace Taylor, they were selling us on his credentials. It was almost like they needed to, to defend the position of hiring Jace Taylor. Today was completely different. It was just, you know, it was almost a sigh of relief. It's like, this is the right man for this job. Now that doesn't mean they're going to win a world series, but it just felt like, you know, you don't have to explain his credentials. You know, he doesn't have to explain himself. He wasn't trying to be anyone other than himself today. And you could argue whether he won the press conference or not, but who cares? He was just himself. I thought AJ Preller was more relaxed today as well. Um, and if you were just down there, if you watched on TV or on social media or you heard it today, I, I just have a different feel, Jim, than I had two years ago. Like, this is the right man. Now AJ Preller's got to go put together the right roster. But I do believe Bob Melvin's the right man for the job right now. Yeah, you were there. Um, you know, Marty was there. It wasn't a full house, by the way. No. Before before anything. Uh, yeah, it took it's, down the mirror. It's, a, it's quarter zip season here. Yeah, and your mirror is gone, cool. but it's mirror's quarter gone. zip. Mirror's gone because there were so many mirror haters. I took the mirror down. Yeah, it's it was it had to go. I didn't want to say anything, go. but yeah, it had to go. I didn't know if had your to wife go. was gonna kill you if she if you t you know rearrange your yeah. Well, house I told her I put it back. I told her I put it back when the when this is over. That's good. But real quick, uh, quarter zip season. Uh, I yeah. tweeted out Bob Melvin in his brand new uh, Padres. Uh, it's like a half zip, maybe? Maybe a quarter I, zip? I, yeah, I think it's a good look. Great look. It's It looks like it's a new one as well. Uh, I need it like ASAP, but I had to bust out the one I had from last year. So it's like the, uh, the Padres, very clean quarter zip. I like um, that, dude. I'm going Vineyard Vines tonight. Yeah, I it's, think it's okay. actually a Vineyard Vines Padres one I, I had as well. But yeah, I agree with you. The, the one that they gave to Bob Melvin today, I don't know if he had to buy that or if he got 20% off, but I thought that was a really nice look. Clean. Like yeah. it's something that has to be in my closet right now. And I'm contemplating going to the team store tomorrow to see if they have it at, at, at Petco <laughs> Park. Going, I thought about going on my way out actually. But so, okay, what, what do you think overall? I mean, we, we liked the hire last week, but now we hear him speak. I'm, I'm even, I'm doubling down after I heard him today, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, because it's more... It's one thing to get a guy with all these credentials. It's another thing to just hear the way he acts. And in listening to the words he used today, I'm I'm very confident in him as the manager. I really am. Yeah, the, the thing with Bob Melvin um, today in the press conference, it, it, you're right. It was a completely different vibe. And the vibe was grown up is in the room now. You know, like the guy that knows what he's doing is here. And there's no questions. That's why it felt like a not memorable press conference. Like I couldn't really tell you anything memorable he said or any quotes that he had that was like, I managed games in my mind. You know, like you just didn't have that from Bob Melvin. And that's a good thing. That's a really good thing because he's not here to win press conferences. 
you know, he's not here to have memorable quotes in press conferences. Like he's here to manage a team and, and win ball games and, and get to the postseason and potentially win a World Series. Like that's mm-hmm. what he's here for. And and that's why I thought um the press conference today was it was very calming. It, it felt like you know, the last two press conferences with AJ Preller, and we'll talk about him in a bit here, but the last two press conferences with Preller, with um, Tingler and, and Andy Green, it felt like, you know, the that Jace Tingler and Andy Green were below AJ Preller as far as like the presence in the room goes. Like AJ Preller felt like the biggest presence in the room. Today, it was the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. You walked in that room and you watched it on television. Bob Melvin is the presence in the room he is the guy that you perk up a little bit when he walks in he's the guy that not demands respect but he already has it from you the second you meet him because of the way he has managed ball games the last decade plus uh the way he's won how many manager managers of the year he won and i think the most important thing of all is what other players say about bob melvin you know, like you can ask uh, Bob Melvin, uh, how are you as a manager, you know, a hundred different times, but really you don't need to ask him that question at all because you have a line of players out the door to let you know how great of a manager and how great of a guy he is. And that's the biggest compliment um, for Bob Melvin is that so many of his former players have tweeted, um, been on radio shows talking about how great he is you know he doesn't have to say anything it's other people saying it about him and that's the biggest um type of respect and compliment that you can give a guy yeah you know and a couple of things by the way i think padres fans deserve a lot of credit when you heard bob melvin talk so glowingly today about oakland's visit this year i think it was a tuesday and wednesday two game series and the tuesday night game i remember that game Late July was it was sold out, you know, forty thousand plus on a Tuesday night. There was a big crowd that Wednesday. I want to say it was an afternoon game against Oakland, and he spoke glowingly about the atmosphere and the ballpark and San Diego. Now, a lot of people do, obviously, people speak glowingly of Petco Park in San Diego, California. We know that, but Padres fans, he he was he was very uh, animated in what he felt about the atmosphere and you compare it to the 180 atmosphere at the Oakland Coliseum obviously and you know he he wanted that I think he's ready for that because he spent the last decade in anonymity even with a team that's been in the postseason six times I think he wants I think he wants to be somewhere where you're going to get the crowds like they get right now at Petco because Padres fans have been so good and I, I think that you know, he wants the 3 million plus crowds that we're going to see over the 80 home dates in 2022. Mm-hmm. And I think he wants to win. I thought what was most interesting to me, to your point, nobody was trying to prove anything today. I thought AJ no. Preller, by the way, was very relaxed today. I thought he was very cool and, and cool. What I'm, I don't mean like a cool guy. I thought he was just very relaxed. I don't think he was trying to do too much with any anything he said. I, I thought he was very relaxed. But what I liked, one thing he said I really liked, he said, we haven't won a World Series. He hasn't as a manager. We both have the same goals. He wants to win a World Series as a manager. We want to win a World Series as an organization. We feel as if we're on parallel paths. We both want to accomplish the exact same thing. Now, it's easy to say that, but it's a lot better to say that with someone like Bob Melvin, who gets to the postseason more than the Padres franchise has. Seven times he's been there. The Padres have been there six times. And you could say that with Jace Tingler. It's just not sincere. You can say it with A.J., um, Andy Green, and it just doesn't feel as if it's sincere. I mean, this is Bob Melvin, who the Yankees tried to lure three years ago, and Billy Bean said no. Yeah. They couldn't even interview him. And mm-hmm. here we are three years later. Not only do you interview him, you get him, and you give up no compensation. Like, A.J. Mm-hmm. Preller, for that alone, deserves a lot of credit. Now, can he put the right roster on the field to to – you know, hold back a Dodgers team and a Giants franchise over the next year or two? I, I don't know the answer to that, but but I do know that A.J. Preller should get credit for what has played out here over the last couple of weeks behind the scenes and now becoming official over the last couple of couple of hours. And the Bob Melvin hiring is going to, I think, eventually make A.J. Preller's career. Like, mm. he has on his resume that he signed Manny Machado, and the Fernando Tatis thing. But Bob Melvin is such a calming voice, and it just seemed like it came off today like 
like a guy that just he just knows what he's doing. You don't have to worry about anything, I feel like, with Bob Melvin. And that you couldn't say for the last what five years, six mm-hmm. years? I mean, six, pretty yeah. much almost the entirety of AJ Preller's tenure as GM. You go through a half a season of Buddy Black. Well, he's go- he gone in the first year, and you go through a half season of Pat Murphy, and that was an adventure, right? And then you go through the years of Andy Green. That was an adventure. Then you go to Jace Tingler. Like, you just don't have to worry about Bob Melvin at all. And um, getting into more details about what Bob said today, I thought it was very interesting when he talked about um, analytics Mm -hmm. because he seemed like at first he was a guy that did not want to be a part of the new age of baseball. And he didn't really believe in analytics, but you know, it was kind of forced on him and he was like, okay, fine, whatever. But then as he's, as he started to see how these things play out and how much analytics help, uh, you know, a, a team and players, it seems like, he has created this perfect blend of analytics and adapting and listening to all the numbers. And also while keeping that, you know, old school approach uh, of a manager when, you know, when he was playing baseball, how, how he sees things should be that players respect. And I, I just, I loved it. I loved hearing him talk about it because it seems like he has such a grasp and such a, not a, a good grasp on, how to balance analytics with, you know, what a lot of people said this team was lacking as far as like an old school type of manager, a guy that, you know, might be older, but he's been in the game a long time as a manager. And that's what Bob Melvin is. And it was just, I just, I continue to say, I can't get over how Bob Melvin is now the manager of the Padres. Mm. It's it's crazy to even say and think it because of how perfect this guy is for this city, for these players, and for the franchise. Like, you know, do I believe everything that happened as far as how it got done? Not really, but I don't care. <laughs> like, he's here. And, you know, how's, how's the sausage made? I don't care how it's made. It's, does it taste good? If it tastes good, I don't care what's in it. You know, and that's how I feel with Bob Melvin, the whole stuff with the A's and the no compensation, like, okay, fine, whatever. I don't care. He's the manager and Preller got it done, whether he got a little lucky, you know, or he created his own luck by making the situation yeah. possible for Bob Melvin. Yeah, I think he did his due diligence and he probably created his own luck. And if you're honest, I mean, Bob Melvin, you got to be looking at the other you know, sometimes the grass isn't always greener, but the grass is greener. I mean, the Oakland situation is so bad. Cutting payroll, possibility of moving, stadium situation, ownership issues. Uh, mm-hmm. Billy Bean was rumored to have an interest maybe in the New York Mets job. I mean, it's it's a bad situation right now in Oakland. We had Scott Miller on earlier today on Extra 1360. Bally Sports San Diego has been doing tons of running for the New York Times uh, this postseason as well. He's in Houston right now. He said that, well, the, you know, analytics would say that, you know, sabermetrics would say, you know, what's a manager worth, even a good manager, three to five games. But he said what it fails to quantify is when something goes really south. So like what happened in July of this year at the deadline, when the Padres basically were one team before the deadline and another team after the deadline, you could argue one of the top five teams in baseball clearly at the end of July and easily one of the five worst teams after July, I'm probably being uh, truthfully, they were worse than that. They're probably one of the worst two teams in baseball from July 31st on. He said, can you envision that having transpired with Bob Melvin as the manager last year at the trade deadline? And he said he couldn't. I mean, not to say it's impossible, but he said it, 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 the difference wasn't going to be three or five games. It was going to be postseason or not if you had the right communicator and leader and manager in there. So that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about, oh, Padres won 79 games last year. Now they're going to win 82. They got a better manager. They're going to win eight. It's different. You can't, you, it's not as quantifiable as that. We can't say that a manager is only worth this much because of bullpen usage or lineup construction or double switches or pinch hitters. It's more than that. The 162 game uh, season is so much of a beast that there's going to be bumps in the road. It's how you navigate those bumps that ultimately determine who's good and who's bad, who's great and who's good. So, 
Uh, I thought that was well said by Scott Miller, and I completely agree with it. Like, this is a guy to manage a team that's in a window, which is what the Padres are in. They're in it. I mean, you can't look at it any other way. You can't be in year four of Manny Machado's deal and say, well, they still have time. You know, it's only year two no. of Tatis's deal. Eventually, Tatis, Jim, you know this is going to be making $30 million a year. And mm-hmm. so will Manny Machado. you got to win now. Now, if you don't win the World Series now, okay. But you got to get to the postseason. you got to put yourself in a position to win right now. So, um, and we've said this too, Jim. I've said how many times it might be lose a battle with Jace Tingler in, in 2021 to win the war because it's, mm-hmm. it's a soap opera. It never ends. I mean, 2022 counts just as much as 2021. And if the Padres win in 2022, I think Padres fans will take it. And honestly, in hindsight, now maybe the 2021 collapse could have been the best thing to ever happen to this franchise. Because if they do not go through that collapse, Jace Tingler is still the manager of this team. He might even have gotten an extension, you know, just prolonging the inevitable of what transpired at the end of this year. So looking back at the 2021 season, while it was horrific to watch and it was like just the most painful thing ever to see this team struggle the way they did with the talent they had, it could turn out to be like a blessing in disguise type of situation because you know everything i feel like had to fall in the right places for bob melvin to be here one the collapse two all of the reports about you know the front office and the the players and tingler and and all of that three the oakland a's they played a huge factor in this as well like if they're not you know having a bad ownership group or a horrible stadium or a you know 3000 fans a night in Oakland because you, you you know you have owners that are threatening to move the team uh to Las Vegas and then Billy Bean allowing Bob Melvin to interview for this job even though he had one year left on his deal like everything had to fall in place and there's a lot of luck that went into that but just going back to everything that happened in 2021 it's like oh if Bob Melvin was here how would this go well luckily he wasn't because if he you know well not luckily he wasn't but they do not get Bob Melvin if the things that happened in 2021 don't happen. It's a great point. No, it's a great point. Uh, if you're just getting to our wrap up uh, channel, by the way, the wrap up show channel here on YouTube, and you haven't subscribed, the reason to subscribe is we're doing year round exclusive Padres content, live chats, taped videos, looks at free agencies, uh, free agent possibilities for the Padres, hot stove. Uh, spring training, regular season. I mean, everything you want. If you're a Padres fan, you're looking for more content. That's why we're here. Hit that subscribe button. It's down below. Hit the notification bell as well. Like these videos. If you're here right now, please give us a like. Follow us on Twitter at John Schaefer at Jim Russell SD. Here's the $180 million question for me, Jim. Can AJ Preller prove that he's able to work with a veteran manager? So that's the big question for me. Can AJ Preller work with a veteran manager? Because he's had the opportunity before. It did not work out with Bud Black. The last six seasons have been with rookie managers, so to speak. Andy Green for four years and Jace Tingler for these last two years. He had 2020 worked out. 2021 was a complete train wreck. So that jury is still out. What happens now that Preller has the 60-year-old that has won previously? It's easy to say right now that everything's going to work out perfectly. But the last time he had someone like this, and I think there's some comparisons that can be made with Bud Black and Bob Melvin, if I'm being honest. Uh, The roster was different absolutely than it is right now but Mm -hmm. that's a big question for me jim like how will aj preller work with a manager that has won before and might have the ability to have a little more sway in some of these conversations with the front office than a rookie manager well look he has no choice he has to work with bob melvin like this is um this is his last guy and by by that i mean he has to make it work because if it were up to me and you have to choose between AJ Preller or Bob Melvin, I'm choosing Bob Melvin every single day of the week. Like it's just, that's just, that, that's the reality of everything right now. So I'm not saying that Preller has to take a step back. I'm not saying that Preller has to um, concede power within, you know, the organization to Bob Melvin or, or anything like that. I'm saying that, you know, he has to work well with Bob. Like, you know, when you work with somebody and you just, you're told like, just make it work. You have to make it work, you know, Mm -hmm. or you're gone. Right. That's, that's, that's a real thing in today's world is like, you're kind of sometimes forced to work 
well or work at least nice. It was the play nice with others type of type of thing. Like you're, you're sometimes you're forced to work with other people you may not like to work with, but in the end it works out. That's the type of thing here with AJ Preller is while I think that he, he's going to eventually, you know, and he probably already has like working well with Bob Melvin, the type of manager Bob Melvin is, is not the type of manager that we have seen AJ Preller gush over. And he's the type of manager that he fired when he first got here. Like Bob Melvin, to me, his personality kind of reminds me of Bud Black. You know, we had Mark Sweeney on today with Darren and he mentioned the same thing as Bob Melvin reminds him of Bud Black and Bud Black was the first guy here when AJ Preller became the GM and he fired him within a couple months. So that relationship, the Preller and Melvin relationship, like it has no choice for AJ but to work. He has to make it work. And this is up to him. You and, know, and like Bob's going to be who he is. And, and I will say, to- and I was going to say, not to cut you off, that there's a reason to believe that AJ Preller wants it as much as Bob Melvin because you're calling mm-hmm. Billy Bean. I mean, yeah. you're calling Billy Bean and trying to get something accomplished that other teams have not been able to do, including the New he York wants Yankees. To make it work. After, yeah, after the 2018 season. So, like, you know, I don't think AJ Preller was kidding when Billy Bean said there's no chance in hell that we're going <laughs> right. to let him walk. And then he probably hung up the phone and said, you know what, let me let me call. Let me call Bob. We've got this 10 and a half year relationship. He's won a lot of games for me. I understand the constraints of Oakland, which, by the way, Bob Melvin spoke about today without being critical of Oakland. And I give A.J. Preller a lot of credit for being very complimentary of ownership and the president of baseball operations, Billy Bean, for what they did in letting Bob Melvin walk. But the fact that you could get this guy right now is what do they say about good luck? It's like when preparation meets opportunity. It's the right time. This wasn't Mm -hmm. getting done in 2018. Mm -hmm. Uh, You weren't getting Bob Melvin when uh, Jace Tingler was hired in 2020. They were coming off a 98-win season in 2018. (laughs) or Excuse me, 2019. So you weren't getting it done then. And if you think about where the A's are right now, we've we've mentioned all these points. They're also coming off a disappointing year. They only won 86 games. They should have gotten to the postseason and didn't. That disappointing, though. It, well, it was disappointing because they were in playoff contention most of the year. It'd be great for the Padres the way they ended, but no. I get your point. Yeah, I mean, I'm just – my point is this. If you couldn't make the postseason this year and you're Oakland and the ownership has said we are cutting payroll, and I think, by the way, allowing Bob Melvin to walk is part of the cutting payroll. He was making $4 million a year. I think they'll hire someone for eight hundred grand, and I think they'll save the $3 bucks, realizing that the difference between one manager and the other isn't going to be much – if we're going to be a rebuilding club in 2022 and 2023. So, um, you know, I, I give AJ Perler credit, to be honest with you, for finding a way to make this work. Now he's got to make it work in season for those 162 games, and it can't work through June or July or even September. It's got to even work in October. And the goal isn't, and Bob Melvin said this today, the goal is not to get to the postseason. They got to win games in the postseason. If there's a knock on Bob Melvin, and I, Jessica Klein Schmidt on today, who covered the A's for forever. NBC Bay Area, she said, I don't think it's a fair knock to say he's 10 and 17 in the postseason. I think find me a manager that's done more with less. And I think that's reasonable, but they need to get in and they need to win series. And hopefully they're able to do that in 2022. Right. And the thing with AJ Preller is, you know, you have, like you said, you have to create your own luck sometimes. And at the time, you might not even know what you're doing as far as like, you're in a position where you need a new manager and you just fired your friend and Jace, Jace Tingler and you're looking at the the pool of, uh, of potential candidates and you're thinking to yourself, well, we like them, but there's still question marks with these guys and maybe I wish we kept, you know, Jace Tingler. So maybe, you know, not knowing what really was happening as far as, okay, the collapse goes and then you have to fire Tingler and then you're looking for a manager and, oh, by the way, the A's, are you know messing up their situation with the city and they're probably going to move to las vegas and then they're gonna have to go through a massive rebuild again like i I bet you aj perler had no idea like the luck he was going to run into when he got a call from bob melvin or he made a call to billy bean or however it came about like however this relationship came about but in the end you got to give credit to aj perler for for creating that type of luck. And it it might sound weird to say that because it's like, dude, he just went through another season where his team underachieved and won 
you know, didn't finish above 500. How can you give him credit? Well, you know, being lucky is sometimes better than being good. And in this case, they got lucky. They got really lucky. This guy is a top five manager in baseball. This guy potentially, and I know he doesn't have the credentials um, of Dave Roberts. He's potentially the best manager in the division now. You know, you can make a case for Bob Melvin as the best manager in the NL West, even though he has not won a World Series, even though he is not, you know, coming off a division title with like Gabe Kapler. Like this guy is is one of the top five, top seven, top eight managers in baseball. And Preller, he closed the deal and he got lucky. And it's fine to say that. Like, it's fine to say we got lucky with this, but you know mm-hmm. what? We we if ended it, up closing it, and that's yeah. what that's all that matters. Yeah, if it benefits the Padres, I'm with you. And and this is with all due respect, honestly, to Jace Tingler. He he could be a fine manager at one point, and I think he deserves credit for 2020. But I don't think a lot of people would would argue with me if I said that he was the fifth best manager in the division. And that's not really being critical. I mean, I think Dave Roberts, the winningest manager in the history of the sport, Gabe Kapler off a 107 win season, Bud Black with his credentials and resume, Tori Lavella, who I know personally. And I have a high level of respect for. I think the Arizona Diamondbacks do as well, considering he got an extension off a 50-win year. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that tells you all you need to know about Torrey Lovello, who's a veteran manager and I think is going to do good things at some point in Arizona. And if he doesn't, he'll do it elsewhere. I think Jason Tingler was probably the fifth best manager in the division. I'm with you. I think you could argue now the dynamic completely changes. What impact does that have? We'll see. But he's... He's going to be considered as good of a manager as there is in the division. That's not that he's better than Dave Roberts or Gabe Kapler, but he's not going to be considered to be worse than either of those two managers. So it's a significant upgrade, not with the roster, but on the bench at the manager position. I don't have all the names in front of me, but just thinking about the National League West and the names that you just read off there, like Bud Black, Tori Lovello, Bob Melvin, Gabe Kapler, Dave Roberts. Is this the best division in baseball as far as managers go? I mean, it it, it would have to be. I mean, <laughs> how could it not be? ALA I mean, is could... pretty good, but I don't I don't know who's the manager of the Orioles. The Orioles are like really bad. Um, yeah, the who, Central. Uh, I mean, it's it's right it's right there. I mean, there's no I mean, question. If, you, if you're right thinking there. of the top managers in baseball right now, three of them are in the National League West. Yeah, and, and another one. That. Bud Black and, and Lavello, like they're pretty good as well, like you said. I know that Arizona had a, a crappy year, but still he got an extension, and that says something about a guy that just lost a hundred plus games. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, do you want to get to some of these questions? Yeah, real quick. Uh special, special shout out. He tweeted us. Mm. Dave Palais. Right there, buddy. Right there. <laughs> Yeah, right I just there. saw this tweet. I, I just saw this tweet. I don't recall ever saying that uh, that Mike Sosha was going to be the next manager of the Padres. Well, he he was. Um, he's looking for an apology. There's my apology, buddy. There you go, right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't recall ever saying Mike Sosha would be the next manager of the Padres. I just said that he was being considered, which is what Dennis Lynn said and what Kevin AC said. Nah, we're just messing with him. All right, um, let's get to some questions here. If you're watching on uh, Twitter. You can go over to our face, our face, our Facebook, our YouTube page right now, uh, Padres Wrap Up Show. Um, if you want to ask us a question, um, if you're on YouTube right now, give us a question that you want answered. We'll try to get to all of these. Um, again, make sure to subscribe, yes, Padres subscribe. Wrap Up Show on YouTube, and hit the and smash that like button. Just just hit yeah, as many times as possible. It. But don't break your computer. No, that would that's be uh, ill advised. All right, here we go. Um, let's go to Leon. Bob Melvin will win at least one World Series as a manager of the San Diego Padres. I um I said today I think he's I I would lock it in that Bob Melvin will be here longer than three years. Yeah, I think it'll be his last stop. He he kind of alluded to that. Um, and if he's here for you know the better part of a decade, then he's going to get to a World Series. If he's here for the better part of a decade, you know what I mean. Is he going to win a World Series? It's hard to win a World Series, but is he the man to bring a championship to the city of San Diego? Why not? I mean, yeah. <laughs> why not? Right? Yeah, I, I think um, if it's not him, then who? Right? Because <laughs> I don't really. There's there's really not many other options here. We talked about it the other day with his credentials. He is the best hire in Padres history. 
I can't think of anybody with better credentials coming in to be the manager, right? No, we went through that whole list, right? I, I don't think so either. Dick Will Dick Williams, but I, I mean, it's been a while. It's been a long time. It's been a long it's time. Been a while. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Bo Mel, happy to have him here. Um, <laughs> Mark Nimitz is a big fan of the Robert Melvin hire. I think yes, he probably he is. is. I think most yeah. people are a big fan. We haven't heard from anyone that's like, I can't believe they made this hire. No, it, it, no, I've not seen it. And if if there are people out there that are upset about it, like you're just you just want to be upset about something. Um, let's go here. Do you think this is the best manager hire by the Padres, at least from initial feelings and expectations? Yeah, you can't get better than this. Bochi, we, I would yeah, say we ran through it. Yeah, Bochi's maybe better as far as name and recognition goes and he obviously has three world series but you're getting pretty much bochi like you said bochi light and he might be a better fit honestly yeah i mean i don't know what it was like like you said dick williams was hired in 82 larry bow was hired in 87 mckeon in 88 i mean there's probably excitement around some of those moves you know if i'm being honest um, in recent history, the problem, listen, Bruce Bochy was a wonderful manager and was the manager of the year here. He got to, he won a pennant here in San Diego, but when they hired him, he didn't have the credentials that he'd later have. Right. If he was hired right now, that would be the most significant hire in the history of the franchise. Bruce Bochy times two. I think Bob Melvin with, I mean, seven postseason appearances, you can't be more accomplished than that. Like the Padres mm -hmm. have never hired a manager with seven postseason appearances. Fact other than Bob Melvin. So based on that alone, he's the most accomplished manager in the history of the franchise when he's been hired. Exactly. Uh, let's go to Gabe's Velasquez says Bo Mel is a manager that did not seem was trying to impress anybody. Yep. He knows what he is and what he brings. So refreshing. That's exactly how I feel. He's a guy that he doesn't need to prove anything to anybody. His credentials speak for themselves. His resume speaks for themselves. The players that have been under him, you know, as a man, like as managing them, like those are the guys that says all you need to know about Bob Melvin. So coming in that room yesterday, today, it felt like, all right, I'm here. Let's get to work. Nothing special. And that's how I like it. Honestly. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, When can we expect... Or what can we expect from Melvin when it comes to the analytics side of things? Yeah, he, he spoke on it. And I actually thought he was going to lean in more uh, heavier than he did because of his mm -hmm. attachment to Billy Bean and the last 10 years in baseball in Oakland. There's no team that's more analytically driven, but he didn't lean in. He said that actually when he got to Oakland, he you know was still leaning on. Hey, listen, I think I was a catcher in the big leagues in the 1980s so the game has changed a lot even since he started managing he said this in seattle in 2003 it's changed a lot you need to bring it all to the table your gut your experience and what the numbers um would say when spit out by a computer but he wasn't like hey you can only you've got the analytics give you that 0.1 percent edge and we need that 0.1 percent edge 162 times he didn't say that he said he understands mm -hmm. the role of analytics He's very familiar with it based on his association with the A's and Billy Beam. But he didn't say analytics will 100% of the time rule the day. He said it's a component, as is experience, as is gut. And I honestly, that's best of both worlds. And A.J. Preller, you know, the Padres have been criticized for not being as analytical as other clubs. And maybe one of the reasons why, and I kind of respect it, is A.J. Preller did come up as a scout. And there is something to be said for scouting, development, uh, that part of the game. These are human beings. Uh, they they have real lives. There are good days and bad days. Numbers aren't, uh, not everything is driven analytically in the sport, even though sometimes we're led to believe it is. So I, I liked his answer. I, I loved his answer. It was it was one of the things I thought that stood out most in the press conference. Because a lot of it's like, you know, how do you, how do you like to be in San Diego? It was a lot of yeah. the normal questions, right? But the end, I forget who asked it. Was it Bryce? I think it was Bryce Miller. It might have been Bryce. Uh, no, it um, might have been. And, and Darnay Tripp, I asked a, a wonderful question at the end of the press conference. I talked to Darnay a lot today. He it does an awesome job, by the way, with his Padres content and, get him and on. his stuff on NBC7. We'll have to get him on. Um, 
But I thought Marty asked. I thought a lot of people asked good questions. I thought Kevin did. Yeah. Um, everyone everyone so asked was, good questions. Yeah, I thought everyone really did. I thought it was a good. It, it, and it wasn't content. It wasn't like, hey, what are you going to do that Jace Tingler didn't do? It was just. I think people recognize that he's probably the right person for this job, and they just wanted mm. to figure out why he wanted to be here right now. Yeah, and he knows how to handle the media. You know, the media here, I feel like, is going to bring off the same vibe maybe in Oakland. And that's not a bad thing. I'm just saying Oakland media, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of media here. Like, so you're not you're not going from Oakland to New York. It'd be That would be completely yep. different. Yeah. Completely. Going from Good the point. A's to the Padres, like it's kind of the same. There's more, there's more media members here, I feel like, for the Padres than there are for the A's. But it's I feel like the same type of vibe, you know? Same type of vibe. It's not a bad thing. It's just that's just how it is. Yeah. Um Daniel said, uh, so the hell did the Padres keep meeting Bob Melvin in Arizona, going to dinner with him and flying him out? To SD under wraps. How do they keep it under wraps? Yeah, I was wondering that because it, we mm. thought it was like this unbelievably quiet um, interview and hire. But yeah, he had multiple dinners in San Diego. Maybe it was a back door wherever they went out to dinner, but he flew in. What do you think they uh, went? He, like I have a no steakhouse? Idea. Maybe something like low key? Like Preller's not a, a guy that I see going to many steakhouses unless it's a big thing. Right. Was it downtown? Were they like on the water in La Jolla? I mean, were they hitting well, that's up That's another Encinitas? thing, too, is if, if they went out in public, how did nobody say, oh, there's Bob Melvin with A.J. Preller? Yeah, it must not have been. Like, what? It, you know what? It, it must not have been. I mean, maybe A.J. Preller shows up, so be it. And then, I mean, are maybe you going to recognize in? Bob Melvin on the street? Uh, if, I, if I'm a baseball fan, yeah. Yeah. Good point. I, I I bet he was seen by someone. It's not. I doubt this was done. I mean, it wasn't done like in the cloak of darkness. I'm sure someone at some point saw him, and then now we're putting two and two together. And we were critical of them last week about them not saying who they've interviewed, type, like a NFL type of thing. Well, now we know. I give them credit for it. And they, you know, one of the first things that uh, Bob Melvin said today was that he's glad that this thing was quiet because it might have gotten a little messy if all of a sudden you see rumors and reports the Padres have interviewed Bob Melvin and you start saying, wait, isn't he under contract? Like, so I give them credit, like credit where credit's due. Good on them for keeping this thing under wraps and having literally zero leaks about Bob Melvin. So, so good on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, Taco Bell. I love, I love this handle. It's like yeah. my favorite thing ever. Taco <laughs> Bell call nine one one. Um, the Padres window officially starts now. If Padres if the Padres don't succeed in a significant way next year, there's no blaming the manager. He's a proven winner with his talent. I agree. Like you can't if they under say they win 86 games next year. Say they have the same identical record as the A's did this year. The Padres have next year. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not looking at it as like a failure from the manager's position. I I'm looking at it as um more risk more realistically like players underachieved or there's injuries or you know those type of factors and yeah, i don't have no, a, this, i don't have the worry that they're going to get articles about turmoil in the clubhouse i just don't yeah, have but, that worry at all but this is all, all on preller now I, to the it texas is. point or to the you know to taco bell's point it's like if bob <laughs> melvin has won with if bob melvin has won with less then you got to give them even if you give them more, you should win to a higher degree. Now, this division might be more challenging. This division mm -hmm. could be tougher with the Dodgers and the Giants, but there's no excuses anymore for AJ Preller. He's got the pieces in place, maybe other than his 26 man roster. So put the right roster together. That's his job and his front office's job between now and the start of spring training and opening day. This is a this is a good question. I like this one right here uh, from Ak Ak At At Atkinson. Atkinson, man. Atkinson, sorry, Urban Farm. <laughs> uh, which player benefits most from Bowmel as manager? Let's hope it's Manny Machado. We saw the quotes today that he's been texting. He's been on the phone with Machado. Let, let's make no mistake. I mean, the Padres fell apart in the second half of 2021 and 2019. I'm not putting it on Machado, but it is a factual statement. Eric Cosmer was on that team. Manny Machado was on that team. Fernando Tatis Jr. in 2019 was hurt, but was on the team. In 2021, yes, he was hurt down the stretch as well. It's like you got to point these guys in the right direction um, because, unfortunately, under two separate managers, they have collapsed in second halves of seasons. Now, 2019, the expectations were low. 2021, the expectations were high. If you get Machado 
on board with whatever you're selling, you're golden. But you have to have Machado on board. Whoever the manager is, the first player I need on board is Manny Machado. Because when he's going well, everything's going well. And when he's not, it can be a problem um, for the team. I think we've seen that the last couple of years. Yeah, the, the guy's Manny. Um, I think the guy that might benefit the most, because Manny needs to be all in. Like That's not benefiting from Bob Melvin. That's more like, what guy do you need the all in from? That is that is Manny Machado 100%. If he's all in, everybody follows the leader. So if you don't have to worry about Manny being all in, like you don't have to worry about anybody else. I think the guy that benefits the most from Bob Melvin, he mentioned today that he loves to work with the younger players. Yeah, he did we forget that. We forget that Fernando Tatis Jr. is still a very young player. You know, he has yet to play over 140 games in a regular season. He has not completed a full year. Um, a, a full 162 game year without being injured on, on the injured list. I think that a guy like Bob Melvin is going to impact Tatis so much because the player that uh, Melvin talked about most today was Fernando Tatis Jr. Like he views him as one of the best players in baseball. And he said that he is the most exciting player in baseball. So I think if you're looking and he also talked about a lot about the roster and if you're looking at the guy um, I think he's most excited about to coach and manage, it's it's Tatis. Like, he's the guy. He, he also said when he got into the game, the game was predicated on veteran players. And he said he feels like it's completely changed, that it's really the young players that drive the direction of a team. It's not the veteran players. So I was, I was intrigued by what he was saying, and I think what he was saying is that this isn't just going to be a veteran group that's in a window that needs to win. I think he's saying there's got to be an influx of both youth and experience, and I'm not going to be surprised if C.J. Abrams is on that opening day roster. We know right. the Tatis is, and the Paddock is still a, Paddock's a relatively young pitcher. I mean, Ryan or, Weathers. like Yeah, I mean, you you got to get these young guys pointed in the same direction as the veteran guys as well, and if you get – more out of, um, you know, you get more out of Weathers and you get more out of, um, you know, some of these younger players that could really bode well. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go some rapid fire here before we, yeah. uh, before we wrap it up. Um, let's see here. Um, Leon says we have the best manager in the NL. We'll see. I agree with that. Um, Let's see here. I got a bunch, dude. Um, Let's see some questions. I said, on, do you think Washington yeah. would be a coach for us? I don't see it. I, I don't why, see it. Why, I think he's. Why would you leave Atlanta? Yeah, I think he has a better shot to uh, be the manager of the A's than come a coach for yeah. the Padres, a, a position that he would probably want to be manager. Like, it, that'd be yeah, weird. Yeah, why would you go back, lateral if you're, if you're. Yeah, I wouldn't go lateral. Um, Correa family's hyped. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see here. Serious Ted Lasso vibes make me feel very hopeful. <laughs> did you see? Did you hear? Like you were there when he talked yeah. about the first meeting he had with Eric Gruppner was Eric Gruppner dressed as Ted Lasso. Yeah, that's right. Because it was like Halloween, right? It was probably like Halloween day. Or yeah, or they did something. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, let's see here. Who will impact the Padres more? I like this one. Next five years, that's Melvin or question. Niebla. I'm going to put that on extra 1360 tomorrow during the pulse at four o'clock. Uh, so thank you, Gabe, for that. Um, that's, that's a, a great question. question. That's and a you great could question. easily argue, you could easily argue the pitching coach, by the way, yeah. I honestly, yeah. I'd be, I hope it's Ruben Niebla. That that would be my hope mm -hmm. to get some of these young pitchers, Mackenzie Gore, Ryan Weathers, others pitching to their capabilities and staying healthy. Not that Ruben Niebla can do all of that, but if he can do some of that, you get this team ERA down a bit, you get starters working another inning per night. You uh, take some pressure off this bullpen. I hope it's Ruben Niebla, to be honest. Yeah, that if it's Ruben Niebla, that means the Padres have a very good pitching staff. Yep. Uh, Michael Myers, of all the current managers in the NOS, Bob Melvin will be the first to win a World Series. Dave Roberts won one in a <laughs> well, fake season. So did he? Yeah, exactly. Half of one. Uh, who will the A's hire? Tingler, Schultz, or Rojas? I think none, none, of, none them. of them. Yeah. Uh, Mark Katze, right? Is rumored to be a, a front runner. Yeah, they, they they might go cheap there. Yep. Um, any A's players coming to San Diego in the offseason? I could see it. 
Maybe. I'm the, maybe someone. I mean, the, the thing is, the A's actually, they're. I kind of like the A's lineup. I don't know who's under control for next year, but I like the A's lineup. Their pitching has been really good, too. Um, but a lot of those guys are going to be up for that's, raises. That's the thing. I mean, the payroll flexibility. I mean, how much can they bring back? How much do they want to shed? I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. Man, that'd be a nice addition if you can add one of those bats from Oakland to San Diego this offseason. I would love Matt Olson. That's yeah, that's a dream would. guy, dream mm-hmm. guy. But it's that's easier said than done. Um, Alex John's looking good with Ooh. the clean cut. I think Cute says, or cut? I don't. Dude, make, I haven't. Got, I got to get a haircut. Maybe shaving. Yeah, and your mic I, still I, looks like a penis, but that's fine. Yeah, it's yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I did say that earlier, actually, before we were on. Um, yeah. yeah, I had to shave a little bit for a high school football game. I called a Helix game on Friday, but now it's. Yeah, looking so. good, looking good. Thanks, man. Uh, another one from Alex. Definitely Olive Garden that him and Peller <laughs> went to. Dude, Olive Garden is super underrated. I don't know about you, John, but I yeah, um, the breadsticks, the salad, yeah. I love me some Olive Garden. It's yeah, legit. I haven't been in a while, but yeah, I'm on board. Um, weight gaming says, will Bob Melvin help Tatis slow down more? Like Tatis not throwing every ball so fast. I, I think the biggest thing that he's going to help um, Tatis with is how to. I'm not saying he doesn't know how to already, but just how to go about his everyday business and how mm-hmm. to be a pro and how to handle adversity. And when he's not doing well, like I feel like when Tatis is not doing well, you can see it. He He's an easy yeah. book to read, you know? Yep. And I think Bob Melvin will be that calming voice for Tatis when he goes through slumps. And also when he's on a hot streak, like, He's, I feel like, going to have a huge impact on Tatis. And Tatis, I feel like, is going to look at Bob Melvin and look up to him, you know, because he looks at his credentials and that all you need to see is 1,300 plus wins, three time manager of the year, you know, just talk to former players that has been under Bob Melvin, like, I, I don't know, jerks and profar. <laughs> so just that alone, knowing who is coming in to be the next manager. Like Tatis is going to look up to this guy and I think it's going to help him a lot. And by the way, I think Tatis is, uh, Tatis is fine. <laughs> Tatis is one of the great players in baseball, even with some of the issues we've discussed over the last three years, even with the injuries, even with some slumping in there. Um, Tatis, not only will he be fine, um, mm-hmm. if he stays healthy, he's the best player in baseball. Even when he's not healthy, he might be the National League's MVP. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure he'll be beneficial to, T- to Tatis, but I think Tatis figures stuff out on his own. And I think regardless, he's going to be one of the great players in baseball. All right, a couple more here. Daniel, is Jay still in the organization? Don't it, know. You know. It wasn't brought up today. It wasn't brought up today. I think that offer's I think still he, on the who table. Said, who just said, someone said he's going to have some opportunities, they believe, elsewhere, but, but maybe he could stay, but they think that he's going to leave. Someone just said that to us on the radio that should have been brought up today that should have been asked of aj preller i should have asked that yeah all right uh let's do three more here three more um adrian good move now time to focus on player development yeah it's important i agree like manager is mm-hmm. one thing but you gotta get the right players let's go graduate some of these players they, who have they graduated the last three years tatis and paddock were on the opening day roster in 2019 who else weathers weathers yeah that's a good one that's it yeah so um, this going. You guys are obviously Italian if you love Olive Garden. Yeah, I'm not. That's a fat. I'm that's definitely a great, not Italian. That's a great I'm post. Not Italian. Um, no let's one. go to uh, one more. Um, let's see here. Pa- Patrick Schiller. Uh, what's the best way to trash talk my Dodger friends? I think the Call best 2020 way. Twenty to- a Mickey Mouse season. Yeah, just just say uh, a Mickey Mouse Mickey Mouse season Mickey Mouse ring. Patrick Schiller. That that's a interesting name but anyway i think that's uh, i think that's pretty good um any more any more questions you want to get to you, you get to one more one more all right um if you see any just let me know because there's a lot here um i was good one one more from alex mm-hmm. overall i was super down on aj the last couple months i'm pretty pumped uh, I was on the Bochi train, but actually think this is a better hire. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, I'm with you. Bob Melvin just turned 60. Like, you want someone that's got a chance to be here maybe five, mm-hmm. seven, shoot, even 10 years. He could if everything works out. I don't think Bochi was going to be here for 10 years. I think it was going to be a shorter fix, two or three years. Um, I, I, nobody would have complained about Bruce Bochi, but I think this is a comparable hire. We know he hasn't mm-hmm. won the way Bruce Bochi has in the postseason. 
Nobody has in recent yeah, baseball history. He's a, he's six years old, but he feels like a young sixty. You know, like yeah. he feels like a guy that, um, he did mention this could be his last stop, and by last stop, I hope it means like seven, eight, nine years. Yeah, hopefully. All right. If you're here with us, you've been hanging out, whether you're watching live or on replay. Again, if you're looking for exclusive year-round Padres content, just hit the subscribe button. That's why we're here. We're doing this every single week, multiple times a week. You see Jim, hit that button down below. Uh, if you're watching live or on replay, would you say smash the like button? I kind of like that. Smash the like button. And you can, follow us on, it. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter as well, at John Schaefer, at Jim Russell SD. Before we get out of here, I want to remind you about Mark Nimitz, our title sponsor of the wrap-up show on YouTube. If you're shopping for auto home renters or life insurance in San Diego, there's only one place to turn. That's to a San Diego and Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance. He's got over a decade of experience, just like Bob Melvin, and he's going to help people like us find the perfect insurance products. What separates Mark from the competition is his customer service and his communication. There's a link down below. If you have insurance needs, get to Mark's website in the link down below. Let him help you and your family with your insurance needs. And if you are wondering how you can reach out to him, all his information is above my head right here. Phone number and email address, probably email address uh, is the best way to reach him. Mnimitz at FarmersAgent.com. That's Mnimitz at FarmersAgent.com. All right. Thank everyone. We want to thank everyone for participating here tonight. And again, if you're looking for this content, just hit that subscribe button. I got to put my mirror, mirror back up back here, by the way, for my wife. And uh, we'll do this again throughout the course of this week, reacting to Bob Melvin as the new manager of the San Diego Padres, believe it or not. Until next time, for Jim Russell, I'm John Schaefer. This has been The Wrap-Up Show, presented by Mark Nimitz at Farmers Insurance.